Security Esports started in the fall of 2017 with just a Dota team. Me, four other guys wanted to play Dota together competitively when I came on campus as a freshman. And we started playing together and I started thinking, oh, we could do a little bit more than this. I had a friend named Jaden who I asked, hey, you want to be the director of all this? And he came on and the two of us started adding on CSGO and Overwatch. League of Legends and a couple of other games to go along with the Dota team that we still kept. So we kind of came in fresh in that semester, starting completely, um, completely from scratch with all the esports teams. And um, about midway through the first semester, um, a guy named James reached out about having uh, an Overwatch team. And from there we started, we grabbed a couple of previous players um, myself, um, a guy named uh, Eric, who goes by Aragon, and his brother Silver Torrent, and a couple of others that came through and came back and we started rolling from there. Um, so, you know, I, I basically got a team together. Uh, we competed in TESPA, where we ended up placing our red team, or our varsity team, in about the top. 40% of colleges, and then our uh, our JV team was then placed in the uh, about the top 90% of all the colleges that participated in TESPA that year. And for that being our very very first year, um, actually competing as a team, um, it, I, it made it made me very proud. Um, you know, I was able to pull something off that I didn't think I was able to do. At the end of my freshman year, over the summer. Uh, before my sophomore year of at Liberty, we basically had a big discussion amongst all the officers of, of LU Esports, and we decided to change the original captains into community leaders, and that made team captains a separate um, option for uh, players to be able to obtain that position, which our first captain for L.U. Red ended up being um, a guy by the name of Ballistica. Originally, we didn't really have a set team captain, so Blink or James was essentially the team captain, mostly just because he was community leader. And then at the beginning of this year, we decided that we wanted to try to find someone to actually take over the captain role. And we picked me because at the time, I think that was before we had Pig for Prez on board, so I was the highest rank on the team. Um, and I've also been there for the past year. So I took over as team captain, which means I do a lot of the stuff with determining rosters, who's playing on what team, on what position. But a lot of it revolves around uh, overarching how the team is gonna work, what players we're gonna have, um, a lot of like what comps we run on certain maps. Yeah, so I play off support, which right now consists of mainly Lucio, a little bit of Baptiste and some Zen thrown on the side, and then maybe Mercy sprinkled here and there, depending on what the team is going for. My goal is mainly to uh, enabling the team, that my teammates are in the position to make the big plays. I play his scan DPS, so characters like Widowmaker, McCree, uh, getting on Tracer right now a little bit, they're the people that are trying to put in the damage. I'm usually the person that's trying to get a pick, so take out one of the enemy team members to get the team to push in, creator of plays it feels like sometimes, and then everybody else capitalizes off of what I can do. So for me personally, I am the main support player for our red team, which basically means I am the support player that keeps everybody alive. Last year, you know, I was mainly playing Mercy and uh, Moira, um, but when the meta changed, I was sort of almost forced onto this character named uh, Ana. So I've, I'm probably the biggest flex player that's been on the team, just jumping to whatever role need. Um, though most commonly playing projectile DPS, um, heroes like Farah, Junkrat, a lot of just heavy spam heroes that can put out a lot of damage, but are generally easy to kill. I'm the main tank, I'm the big guy, big shield. Uh, like I said, I play very aggressive. I like to initiate the fights instead of trying to make a reactive play. Um, I make them play the, the way I want to. Um, I always say this, whoever has the more aggressive rhyme wins the game. If I can make their shield turn the way I want it, I can get easy shatters and easy kills. Now I'm pretty firmly solidified and off that role. 
So I play a lot of Diva and Zarya and Roadhog, some Hammond. Mostly, I play a lot of Diva Zarya because they're the ones that are strong right now with the comps, but I like to play a lot of Hammond. I play that when I get the chance. Okay, so Tespo last year was kind of, uh, kind of felt like a bust, like we were doing okay. Um, just felt like we weren't really like sticking together as a team. We weren't growing a lot. We were kind of just like stuck where we were. Uh, and then this year, I was gone for a semester and I came back and I just felt like a completely different team because we'd gotten some people that had a lot higher skill. I had improved myself, I felt a little bit. Um, and we just started clicking and bonding a little bit better and we had a really good season this year. So at least for both of our teams in the most recent TESPA season, um, our red team uh, ended with an average SR of 3.6K, which is about low masters. Um, for the National League in TESPA, we went 5-2, and two, which basically placed us um, 96 out of 452 other college teams, which is in the top 100 or the top 21% uh, of collegiate teams and that compared to last year's of the top 40 percent was just it, it just blew my mind uh team base wise it was, it was a i mean either way it was a lot of fun um i got to know all of you guys which are even though your ranks might not show you guys are all very good players um as a team we definitely coordinated although there are some players that do not coordinate as well within us six we also do, still do a very good job with coming together as a team. And, and Red wasn't the only people to improve either, it was Navy as well. You know, they last year they ended at the top 90% of the ladder, and now this year they ended with an average SR of 2.4, and their final placement was 275 out of 452 colleges, college teams, which that alone is in the top 60%. Having a JV encourages more players to be involved because you don't have to be the best to be involved. You can still have like you can still be part of the team and not be the very best. People like me or people who are new to the game or esports in general, they still have a chance to be able to learn and play and be a part of the experience because otherwise we just have LU Red and maybe high plats so we wouldn't have any places for people with gold, mid gold, silver, even bronze if we ever had something like that. And I think it's also important, because um, even if we're not the best, we're still improving. Um, like, it gives more players a chance to improve and play competitively like that. You get to learn more, you get to refine your skills, um, become a little bit better. I think the team dinners we had um, for Just Navy and with some Red people when they came, those were really fun to get to know people outside of the video game and just have like face-to-face -face personal time. Just being with other people that enjoy the same thing that I am able to enjoy. And it's a sense of family that you don't get very often. Yeah, Volan was a tournament that um, University of Tennessee Knoxville uh, put on, invited several local or regional colleges to come play in, and we sent Overwatch and Rainbow Six to go play in it. There were seven Overwatch teams, I believe, and five Siege teams. It was just really cool. They had basically this giant room filled with hundreds of people that all had their own setups brought there. And where everyone's on the same page, and we're all playing our, we're all on our A game, you know, playing our best. And there's just that, that high that you get from, from competing as a team and competing well as a team. It's just such an incredible feeling. When you, when you win your match, everyone stands up, you yell, everyone's so excited, you turn over, you know, you congratulate the person next to you. It was so much fun, it really helped get to know the, uh, the team better, and it was just really fun personal experience overall. It was, it was a really good experience for the team to like hang out together, I think, because uh, we don't get to see each other in person a whole lot, so it was nice to be able to have that opportunity to hang out with all the guys. Overwatch ended up placing fourth, which um, doesn't sound great at first, but Looking, looking at it more closely, the, um, the team that ended up knocking us out was actually ranked number 17 in TESPA. So us ranked at 96, playing against them, and our final match being a, whenever we played them as a best of three, uh, we lost the first map to them, and then we drew the second, and then drew the third, and then finally lost the fourth, barely. So it was an extremely close match against a team that should be 
so much better than us based on the testbook ranking. So I was extremely happy with it because of that. I think video games is a really tough issue for a lot of people in Christianity because they think, wow, it's like such a waste of time, you know? Uh, it's something that people just sit down and waste their life away. Uh, and it might have been like that a while ago when it was all solo games and you would kind of just lock yourself in your room and play video games, uh, but it's emerged into a super social aspect uh, and getting to play with other people and talk with other people about whatever you want in real time. Um, and I think that brings a lot to the table as far as like, it's a talent that you have to develop, so you're putting in the time just like you would a sport, um, but then we can bring our faith into it as well uh, and be able to use video games almost as a tool to talk about faith, talk about religion, talk about Jesus uh, in ways that usually aren't talked about, especially in this community because it seems to lack a lot of faith-based faith aspects and uh, just is culturalized away from religion completely. So it's cool to be able to bring that towards the esports community rather than just keep them as separate things. I've loved every minute, every practice, and uh, the annoyingly long car rides to Volan. Uh, but it's all, been, it's all been so much fun and something I would have never gotten to experience you know, in my life until, until coming here and, uh, and joining like an actual, actual organization or a group of people that, uh, that also want to play and compete competitively. It's been such just an amazing experience and opportunity. Go much further as in our placements and ranked wise in the TESPA, uh, TESPA seasons. I feel like we could have gone, gotten much better. Um, I definitely want to see us go into more events like that, whether it's, it doesn't have to be like five and a half hours or more away, it could just be like in the area or like to Maryland or DC where a lot of people do stuff like this. Just like I think, I think we've been on a good trajectory for growth with like going from just being a couple guys you hang out and play Overwatch to actually going and test the tournaments and now going to the live tournament. Uh, if we keep up on this route, I think we'll we'll start getting bigger and bigger in the esports department. I know there's a couple really high-ranked players that came to Seafall, so maybe a couple of them will come back to Liberty and join the team. That'd be pretty sweet. So I just love to see the team do better, um, better and better, get in more competitions. The last two years have entirely been a passion project for me. This is, esports is the industry that I love, and um, I love competitive gaming. And running all this for the last two years has been entirely just my own free time spent into it and being paid or anything like that. I'd love to jump into it um, at an even more professional level, you know, getting a job and getting, um, getting hired and paid to do all this. Um, and jumping to a more, uh, beyond just being a club on campus that's run by students, but being a real facility supported program, which I think um, all the teams and players have definitely earned. And I, I think it's something that can definitely happen in the near future. Yeah, uh, I would just say I would love to see more support from the university uh, as far as faculty starting to understand. Uh, so even if this video goes just to show uh, that we have a passion and we want to bring Jesus to the community of esports, uh, it's, it's something new, uh, it's something fresh, so there's not a lot of experience with it, but I, I think it'd be really cool to be the pioneers of that. Um, it'd be really cool just to have Liberty University be pushing us into that, uh, not be like hands off and say, we don't want any part of this. That's like the big thing that I'd love from Liberty.